So my name is Edith Balas. Uh, I was born in uh, uh, June the 20th, 1929, and today is uh, June the 18th. It is uh, very difficult for me to speak about these things. And usually I use my, uh, I, I, I forgot, forget my, my English. And uh, uh, my mother tongue is Hungarian. And uh, I uh, go back to my old memories and my old language. So I will probably make lots of mistakes, although I am uh, in this country, in, in USA, for the last 40 years and for the last 30 years and 31 years, I am teaching art history at the university level. Of course, uh, then I speak <laughs> correct English. Um, I know that uh, this is important because uh, uh, the survivors and the uh, Holocaust is denied and this is why I agreed to have my portrait made as a survivor. I was eight days younger actually than Anna Frank and I survived bergen -Belsen. Unfortunately, she died. So I feel that I am a sort of a continuation of someone who, who died. And not that I am as uh, creative as she would have been, but still I wrote about 10 books and 20 articles in art history. And um, you can imagine how many people could have done similar things if they would have survived. Anyhow, in 1944, when the Germans came and occupied Hungary, in a few days we were taken to the um, um, to the um, factory where they. Uh, where they uh, uh, fabricate bricks and the family was there for about three weeks. My father was beaten up uh, to give out gold and jewelry. Uh, we were not rich, we were okay but not rich and still he was beaten up and uh, then released. In about 10 days or so, uh, trains were coming into the factory. We were allowed to take very few things and about 70 or 80 people, young, old, and uh, all ages, uh, were pushed in a, in a train uh, and uh, we were transported there. We stayed about uh, three days, or three days or four days until we reached Auschwitz. We were told that we are going to Hungary in another place and we are going to work on the field but that didn't happen. Um, we saw uh, that we are in um, Poland, because we saw from the little window uh, the uh, name of Krakow, the city. So we arrived in, in Poland. I heard from my uh, school that sometimes Jews were executed through gas, 
through uh, just killing them. And um, so we were expecting the worst, but uh, still we had a hope until we arrived to Auschwitz where uh, we have seen, I mean, I and my parents, um, mother and father, we have seen uh, big um, furnaces. It was night and they were, um, they were um, burning. Also the smell was uh, terrible, um, the smell of burned flesh. And then we thought, this is it. So we said goodbye, the three of us. Then we were uh, chased down from the, um, from the train. And someone asked my father, whose daughter or whose child is this? Because I was 14, going 15 at that time. Uh, and he said, that's mine. That was my first lucky break. Because he could have asked someone else and he said that, I don't know. Because that man told my father that she should say that she is 16. Because uh, he asked whether, uh, how old I am. My father said 14. And he said he should say that she is 16. So I was instructed, and in, in that chaos, my father disappeared, and I have not seen him or heard about him until the end of the war. And fortunately, he survived, my mother survived, and we, as far as I know, we are the only family out of 15,000 Jews from Cluj, where I am from, Cluj, which is Romania now, at, at that time was Kolozhvar, uh, it was Hungary, and now it is called Cluj-Napoca, the ancient uh, name of the city, uh, the Roman name of the city. And it, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire was Klausenburg. So 50, uh, out of 15,000, we are the only family who survived in integrity, mother, father, and, and child. So I consider myself very lucky. And uh, that was the most important thing in the concentration camp. Uh, I, I would say 90% would be luck and 10% maybe. Um, willing to live and uh, physical strengths and I would think also naivete because I just opened up to the world and I thought that uh, um, I, I cannot die because I just started to live, started to understand things and uh, um, so that that was also part of the um, survival uh, motifs. And I don't take part of, of this Holocaust uh, things because I feel that if I want to survive I, I, I cannot uh, re think about this all the time, so I let them go, possibly, and I don't think them, but anyhow, I cannot escape, escape, even if I swim in the pool, I remember when I didn't have any place of my own, and here I am swimming in the pool, you know, which is positive, but uh, many things reminds me. No, I don't take part.
I think uh, this is why uh, Ellie Wiesel's face is so sad. <laughs> And I, I think mine is not sad. Yeah. It's, it's me, not very flattering, but it's <laughs> me. <laughs> yes. <laughs>